thank you guys for watching and jumping on. If you have any questions about how to discipline or punish your kids, <laughs> put them in the put them in the comments in um, Facebook because I'm watching. I have my phone here, so I'm going to be watching. If you guys have any, uh, let's put it down. You can only hear rain on your windows. Thanks. <laughs> okay, cool. So talking about discipline versus punishment today with our kids. Um, and I want to touch on what to do, what not to do, what to say, what not to say, what's the difference between discipline and punishment. And I have to actually thank the beautiful Magdalena Hawley, who's in, she's a mum in this uh, Facebook group. Let's raise emotionally intelligent kids, if that's where you're watching it. Um, because I had a chat with her today. She interviewed me on her Facebook group um, and we got talking about discipline versus punishment and what's the difference is there a difference why do we discipline our kids should we dis should we be disciplining them so discipline versus punishment as i was saying i was talking about this um earlier earlier on this afternoon and what i want to talk to you guys about is that that there's a there's a huge i want to kind of say misinformation um there's a huge like crack in the over time in the meaning and almost like it disintegrated the meaning of discipline right so if you guys ever are so nerdy like me and you look up the meaning of the word discipline it actually means to teach and instruct our kids which is what we want to do we want to teach them um, appropriate ways to behave appropriate things to say versus inappropriate you can't if you're angry that's okay. We all know that emotions are not good or bad, but we want to teach um, and, and coach our kids to understand that when you're angry, you can maybe stomp your feet or you can shout or, or whatever your boundary is with your family, but you cannot hit or kick or scratch or bite or name call or whatever it is, right? So unfortunately, along the way, over the years, as, as what happens a lot with language, Maybe just the English language, I don't know. But um, I was having this conversation with my husband. I said, because we talk about nerdy stuff like this. I was like, discipline actually means like the core of that word. It comes from the meaning of teaching and instructing. So if you think about when you say, oh, what discipline are you studying? Or what's your discipline at university? Mine was Bachelor of Applied Science Speech Pathology back in the day. So it's about learning and teaching our kids or learning and teaching someone. However, now I, I will ask you guys, what does discipline mean to you when you hear that word? Do you discipline your kids? Shouldn't you be disciplining your kids? What does that mean? Put it, I would love you guys to actually put it in the comments. I'm watching, sorry, if I look down, I'm watching on my phone. And I would love you guys to, set, to put in there, what does discipline mean to you guys? If someone says, do you discipline your kids? What comes to mind? Okay. So put that in the um, comments. So discipline, as I said, it means, it actually means to teach and instruct. And let's use it in the parenting sort of realm to teach and instruct our kids. However, it has now become synonymous with punishment and shaping behavior using punishment um, and, or an authoritarian kind of parenting style very um, draconian. I heard someone else say the other day that draconian style of punishment, um, squashing out the behaviors that we don't like and obeying, that's the other one. So thank you, Ashley. Rules and punishment, exactly. Rules and punishment. So that's what we think of when we talk about discipline now. And I am so nerdy that I also just was researching and Googling and looking up and reading about discipline versus punishment. Um, if you put in, maybe I know our Google search terms are um, specific to like us and what we Google, but if I put in the term discipline meaning in Google, those two terms, the first result that comes up is collinsdictionary.com and it says discipline is the practice of making people obey rules or standards of behavior and punishing them when they do not. Discipline is the quality of being able to behave and work in a controlled way, which involves obeying particular rules or standards. So, holy moly. Um, that just, it, you know, it 
provides confusion for parents when they think, how, how do I raise my kids? How do I raise emotionally intelligent kids? How do I raise um, kind, confident, empathetic, resilient kids? Do I discipline them or not? Do I appease and give in and let them get away with this? Or do I need to be harsh and use time out and squash those inappropriate behaviors of hitting, smacking, whatever? Whoa. So with that stuff said, there is a huge difference between discipline in the um, original sense of the word. And like I said, that is to teach and that's to instruct. So do you want to discipline your kids? Let, let me put the focus back on me. <laughs> do I want to? Because everyone is different. You guys have your own values, your own um, boundaries and what's important to you guys as family. For me, do I want to discipline my kids? meaning teach and instruct them? Of course, 1000%. I want to teach my kids what is appropriate in terms of behavior and language and, and how they act. And I want to teach them what's not appropriate. Why? Because I'm not going to be around forever. Um, I'm not with my kids forever. When they're at preschool or school or out with friends, if, if I am not teaching and guiding and coaching my kids on how they behave, or on how they can behave and act and say, and what they say, then I, it's a disservice to my kids because if they don't know how to regulate their emotions and ask for help if they need it rather than just blow up, they're, not, they're gonna lose friends. Some, you know, things happen in the playground. Um, they make mistakes or they, they accidentally kick someone with a soccer ball or whatever it might be. We need to be able to teach our kids how to manage those moments how to, if you make a mistake, uh, repair, apologize. If we don't do that, our kids are not gonna, they're gonna um, lose friendships. They're not gonna be picked to be on this team. They're, they're not going to have good relationships with friends and with teachers. Teachers aren't gonna wanna teach them. And it's the kind of ugly truth, I think, that naturally as humans, we're flawed. And we think, oh gosh, there's that really tough, rude kid, or he, or he, or he blows up all the time. We teachers, I, I, I shouldn't paint this brush, but it's, an, I'm saying it's just natural human um, behavior to think, oh, it's so much easier to teach the kids who are calmer or, or listen or, or whatever. And if we think about our um, kids when they are, they're going to become 20, 25, 30, 35, when they're adults. I want my kids to um, not be turned away or lose out on a job at a job interview because of what I may have not um, helped. I haven't paved that path for them or given them the tools to create that path. So that's me. I kind of waffle, but um, I hope that makes sense. Does that resonate with you guys? Can you put something in the comments on Facebook? If that makes sense, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> because this is, this is why it is so critical. If we wanna raise happy, healthy, confident, resilient kids, emotionally intelligent kids, of course we need to discipline them. And that just means have clear, firm, loving boundaries and be able to tell them and teach them and show them when their behavior or their language um, and their actions is or isn't appropriate. If we don't, it's a disservice to them. Does that make sense? Ooh, thanks, Wendy. Discipline comes from the word discipleship, which is exactly the reframe you're speaking about. It's teaching, training, coming alongside. So I thank you so much, Wendy. I love the walking alongside um, mentality. That is a mindset that when our kids blow up, when they make a mistake, if they damage something at home, if they come home and they've bombed on a test, if we can walk alongside them and do the discipline or teach and guide them and show them, hey, how come that happened? Um, what do you think went wrong? I get that you're feeling this way. Like showing that empathy and validating their feelings, not just dismissing, it's not a big deal. Oh my God, this is a, this is a year six test. You've got bigger things to worry about in life. No, when we empathize and we validate and we show our kids that that's meaningful to us as well as them. Um, and then we help them problem solve. Look, what do you think went, what do you think went wrong here? What did we miss out on? If this happens again, what could you do? 
So, and that's where the growth mindset comes in, teaching our kids some of these problem solving skills and being able to hand them over to our kids. So we can't swoop in. I was talking to a mum about this this morning. We can't swoop in and save our kids from heartache or making mistakes, or failures or adversities. We know from resilience literature that to build resilience, we need to allow our kids to go through those tough times and those adversities so that they can come out the other side, yes, with our help. We don't just say, oh, well, you stuffed up. Good luck with that, <laughs> but with our help. And we say, okay, what, what happened there? Or what went wrong? Hey, you got out of that. We, we worked through it. That was yucky, but you coped. You're strong. Um, sorry, I'm just watching, <clears throat> watching the comments. So where was I going with that? <laughs> yes. Wendy said to walk alongside and I love that because we are not, we can't show our kids that we have it all figured out, that we're infallible, that they were, we're above them and we know everything because number one, we don't know everything or at least I don't. And number two, I want to show my kids that I make mistakes too. I stuff up. I overshoot sometimes. I forget things. Sometimes I'm snappy to daddy or I'm cranky with you. Um, we don't have stuff figured out. And if we, if we show our kids or if we sort of hide that stuff and then we discipline, i.e. punish our kids, like what is that saying to them? What message are we sending them, right? So like kind of alongside the, that concept of walking alongside your kids is showing them that we make mistakes and we stuff up and how do we get through that? How do we apologize? How do we repair? How do we do a redo? Feels yucky. It's embarrassing. I would rather sweep it under the rug, but hey buddy, I'm sorry I shouldn't have shouted at you like that. I was out of line, I was stressed and I couldn't control my emotions and I took it out on you and I should not have done that. So I, like as well with disciplining and in terms of teaching, we can teach our kids that we make mistakes too. We can walk alongside you and show you how to um, how to do a repair, how to do a redo, how to make amends and how not to um, make these mistakes again if possible. But we're probably going to because we're human. <laughs> and so punishment, if we move on to that, that in, in the um, interview I was doing with Magdalena earlier in her group, we talked about um, discipline versus punishment. And I said to her, if we look at what's underneath that, underneath the surface, what is driving our um, our feeling of wanting to give consequences or punish whatever that might be when we are when we go into that punishment mode of right you took the texts off him without asking go to your room um, we might send him to time out whatever it is when we punish um, number one it's often not meaningful to them it's not sometimes it's not relevant we might say, wow, you, you've been so selfish today. We're not going to the cafe on the weekend for breakfast, like I said. So it might not be meaningful, relevant, realistic. Um, and we know from a lot of research as well, punishment often has the opposite intended effects. It's counterintuitive. If we want our kids to stop doing an inappropriate behavior, punishment actually doesn't work. Plus, when our kids are emotionally heightened, if they are in fear of us, because we are looming over them, shouting and sending them into that emotional hijack stage. There is no teaching time, no teaching moment. Their brain is, their logical, rational, understanding, learning brain is offline because they're in that fight, flight, emotional moment. So um, as well, what is driving that punishment is often, and I said that today, I was like, often it's to make us feel better, which is really selfish, but we do it. We feel like I've nipped it in the bud. I've sent you to time out. Now you're going to not do that again and I feel better <laughs> and then you walk off um, and and we find and parents say to me, they come to me and they say, I try to do this. I've taken away this. I've done time out. I've taken away all the devices they own and nothing changes. Their and I'm like, I have to kind of carefully say nothing will change that way. So looking at what is driving that feel, uh, that feeling or the need to punish. And if we can um, shift our mindset and our mentality over to, um, to, I've just lost my train of thought because I looked at the comments and I shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, over to discipline. 
which is teaching. So how can I teach my kids either here in this moment or at another moment, not in the heat of the moment, in the midst of the emotional, he's just hit her or he's, she's just called me the worst mum ever, whatever it is. So I often talk about striking when the iron is cold. What does that mean? So if you think about, we usually say strike one, the iron's hot in the moment, let's do it, let's get it, you know, we nip it in the bud or whatever we want to do. But as I said before, our kids are often, if they're in a heightened state of emotion, their thinking, logical, rational brain can go offline. And there is no moment to, you could, you could, give them the world and they'd still say, no, I hate you <laughs> because they're not thinking rationally. So in terms of discipline, my approach and the, um, the emotionally intelligent approach would be to yes, set limits and boundaries in the moment. Like if someone's getting hit or kicked, then that needs addressing. But at other times when the iron is cold, <laughs> then having a talk, and connecting with your kids, even if they're two or three, adjust your language, it can be done, um, adjust to age appropriate concepts, but have a talk. And, and I find the best, I would like to ask you guys, when is the best time that you find to talk to your kids about this stuff? A time when they are calmer, more, what's the word? <clears throat> calmer, more, no, help me with the word relaxed more open more receptive that's the word <laughs> when they're more receptive and calmer and ready to talk they're not going to get they're not at risk of being re-triggered sometimes i still make this bloody mistake and i think oh my god i just brought it up too soon and my kids will go back into oh, i didn't mean it or like it's just it's, they're not ready so i often find it's actually the evening time the tuck in kind of after bath and stuff we read a book and I'm tucking particularly my old my oldest in and um, I say to him something like hey buddy you know this afternoon it was a bit of a big day like we there was a bit of a blow up there wasn't there that was huge and I got really frustrated at you and you got so angry and um, let's talk about that because I feel like it's maybe it's something that keeps coming up or um, you know we we all felt really terrible after that, it was stressful, wasn't it? Um, and then having that conversation about under the iceberg, like what drove or what triggered whatever that behavior was from your child. And then talking about, yeah, like empathizing, balancing, saying, I, I get it, she shouldn't have taken those off you. She didn't ask and it's your favorite thing. And that is so frustrating. I used to hate when my brother did that when I was little, for example, and then say, you know what? So my daughter's three and I would say, you know what? She's probably going to keep doing this because she's still learning about how to share <clears throat> or how to ask for things. What do you think we could do next time if this comes up again? Because I bet you it'll probably happen next week. It's really annoying, but it probably will. What's something we could say? What's something we could do? Um, how can I help you? What, um, what do you think would help us work through this next time? Because this time we all blew up and you scratched her or you hit him or whatever it might be. And we can't do that. That is a no, that's a non-negotiable in our family. So um, does that resonate with you guys? Can you put something in the comments, like a yes, I can, like a thumbs up or an emoji? Does that make sense? That whole approach of discipline in terms of teaching and guiding and emotion coaching our kids through those big emotions and challenging behaviors rather than just punishing in the moment. Yeah, Karen, problem solving is powerful. So that's the other thing. Thank you for mentioning that because problem solving and helping our kids to internalize the ability to solve problems is so empowering because our kids are gonna come up against Problems literally in day-to-day -day life, things go wrong. They forget something at school. A friend borrows some, like their pencils and doesn't give them back. Something happens in the playground. Plans change, things fall through. It's literally a daily occurrence. <laughs> and so the more that we can help guide and coach our kids to manage and navigate those problems and come out with some solutions or some options to give a go, that stuff is so empowering. 
it kind of um, puts the onus on them and I phrase it in such a way that is really positive and saying hey you know what you're big enough I I really think you can work this out let's do it together um, you're a big kid now and you've got such a clever brain in your head that you can think of I'm sure you can think of two or three ways that we could go about this and so it kind of builds their sense of self-esteem and their their sense of identity as a clever intelligent um, problem solver kind of kid rather and that that's confidence and resilience rather than the the victim this is too hard everything goes wrong I'm no good at anything mentality yes takes us to slow down moment to moment I, I just said to someone the other day our kids are always telling us through their behavior um, and everything they're always telling us to slow down slow down slow down and help me through this slow down can you show me how to get through that I don't know the way this is tough I'm still learning have you got my back can you be on my team you know our kids don't come knowing all the paradigms and the beliefs and the rules the unwritten unspoken rules that we have um, I was doing a I want to mention this quickly because it's such a good example yesterday I was I did an interview spot on an international parenting summit run by a beautiful clinical neuropsych over in the US and um, he himself has ADHD talks about the challenges with that and he uh, brought a lot of parenting experts together to form this parenting summit that runs every few months and so he tells a um, he tells a, a story about when um, a young child goes along to a birthday party and there's sweets out food balloons lots of fun stuff it's, it's an exciting energetic atmosphere and the beautiful giant cake is brought out and placed on the table with all the sweets like this sounds like a lot of birthday parties we go to, right? And he said, um, imagine the child, five or six years old, or four, whatever it is, going up and looking at the cake and thinking, oh my God, that's delicious, and wanting to just try a bit of the cake or, or take some of the lollies off the stand and thinking, I love them. I can't wait to try them, I'm gonna try one. And then all of a sudden, a parent, his parent or someone else, slaps his hand away and says, don't you touch that, that is so rude. Um, of course we don't touch that until we sing happy birthday or until X, Y, Z happens. Um, go over there, like you're in time out or something like that for ruining the cake or taking the sweet. And this child is like blindsided with these unwritten rules that they may not have learnt yet. Even if they have been to birthday parties before, they may have, they may have been told that and then forgotten it this day or they... We know kids' brains are under construction. They can't have that, they don't have yet that impulse control mastered. And so they swipe, and then they get in trouble for it and they go, what? And then they melt down and they cry. And, and we're sitting there as the adults, triggered and frustrated, and embarrassed about our child's behavior. Um, and so this is where the punishment versus the discipline or the teaching comes in. So um, I hope <laughs> that was, I just love that example because. Um, Sometimes anecdotes and stories like that really hit home for us. Another one that I often talk about is if we imagine our um, a 12, 13, 14 month old baby or toddler learning to walk. Um, imagine we see that baby falling down, stumbling, trying to walk and then um, falling over and bumping their knees and getting upset. When our baby, sorry, got a phone call. <laughs> When our um, baby is stumbling and getting upset, do we say, wow, how rude, you still can't do this? You've been watching everyone around you for 12 whole months, your whole life walk, and you still can't do it. How naughty, go to your room. You know what, I'm gonna put you in timeout. You still, you haven't got this, and you should by now. Everyone else around you can. Every other 12 month old can walk. Or, so do we punish them? Or do we say, okay, you haven't got this yet. Come on, I'll help you. Hold my hands, walk with me. It's okay, you're gonna fall down, you're gonna stuff up. It's okay, let me rub your knees. We'll, we'll, we'll get there in the end. So I love that example 
and I, I talk about that when I do a workshop, if I do a speaking engagement, if I, when I do videos like this, because it is so powerful to think, oh my God, for, for a child that age and for walking, which does take practice, we're fine with that. We don't, we don't punish. However, we take fast forward maybe five years or 10 years. And again, another brain skill, another skill that our kids are developing and mastering um, for example, controlling impulses or control, behavioral self-control, managing big emotions, and they fail at it and they stumble and they fall and they blow up and they arc up and they, they get angry and they cry or they, they hit or, or grab or snatch. And we go, wow, how rude. You should know this by now. I don't want to see that behavior go to timeout. Like, is it just me or is that, that's a, there's a beautiful kind of synchronicity there with the, the idea that our kids are always learning and mastering. And, and if they have a behavior or a skill and they show that skill one day, doesn't mean they are going to show it every day after that. Right? Does that make sense to you guys? Am I going off on a tangent? So it's about being empathetic, patient, tolerant, understanding and helping guide and coach our kids through it using discipline. I, I still don't like that word because to me also it has that negative connotation. Damn it, people have ruined it. <laughs> so teaching and guiding rather than punishing. Okay, um, if you guys have any questions, I would love to hear them. You can put them in the, if you guys are watching the replay, put the questions in the comments on Facebook because I'm gonna be going back and looking at them. And if this is something that you want to learn more about or you're struggling with your kids, struggling with discipline or boundaries or raising emotionally intelligent kids, managing your own frustration, stresses and triggers, I would love, love, love you to say me, please. Um, and say, yep, that's me, because I would love to send you information about my next group coaching that's starting in April next month. It's a, just an eight week program time with me. Uh, once a week on Zoom, we meet a group of beautiful, like-minded parents who want to learn the exact same stuff. And I had a call, I had a call with a mum in the current group this morning, and she said, "Oh my God, even though we have all different kids and they're slightly, you know, they're all different, we have the same. Like we're struggling with the same things." I'm like, "Yeah, that's it." And so, learning together, learning about this stuff, implementing little tiny tweaks and little changes makes a massive transformation massive transformation in your kids you notice they change when we do the work and i love the saying I, I heard this a while ago and i haven't forgotten it small hinges swing big doors big doors so you make teeny tiny little changes and you see just the energy in the home shift and things with the kids um, become more attuned with the kids. They become more attuned to you. They will listen to you. They are more connected to you. They manage their emotions because of the work and the stuff that we do. And I call it work, but it's not work. <laughs> um, so please, I would absolutely love anyone who's watching along to say, yeah, you know what? I want a bit of info on that. Kind of interested. Send me the info. I have a link and I will put the link in the, um, in the comments. Um, or you can put me, please, and I will PM it to you. Friend me on Facebook, because if we're not friends on Facebook, it's going to go to your others folder and you're not going to see it and then we'll miss out. But I'm already putting down names and I've got spots taken already for the April group. And I do not want you guys to miss out. It's honestly, I don't say it lightly. It's life transforming because the work that we do now with our kids, yes, it shifts the whole vibe and the energy with our family now but you are shaping the, your kid's way of being into the future. You're gonna shape the way that they parent their kids in 10 or 20 years. That just blows my mind, it literally does. But that's the power of emotional intelligence. And it's fun, it's fun, we come along, we all have, we bring our coffee, it's at eight o'clock Sydney time at night, the kids are mostly in bed and we have a coffee or a glass of wine. <laughs> and it is, it is so empowering. I just feel like this is an investment for your kids and it starts with us. So it's a no brainer for me. Once you do this, you don't have to do it again. 
So um, I will let you guys go because it's almost pickup time. And yeah, just sing out. Send me a private message. Friend me. I don't mind. Let's like do this for the kids. It's not for us. It is for us. We get the we reap the rewards too, but it's for our kids. So okay, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Have a good one. <laughs>